Hi, everybody. I'm Scott Gam for The Street on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange with Jim Cramer. We are following Netflix this morning. Jim, you have some analysis for us in real money. Yeah, I mean, one thing, there's a moment in the conference call, it's very funny, which uh, Reed Hastings says, listen, our uh, negative cash flow, which of course is much better, is a sign of our enormous success, the best line in the whole conference call. But my thinking is, is that this is a FANG stock. It's figured out how to use the internet. Facebook figured out how to do personal narrative. Amazon figured out how to sell merchandise. Uh, Google figured out how to do uh, amateur video with YouTube and they figured out how to send professional uh, content creative content over the internet and that's what the uh, growth stock managers want so it's given these managers what they want and in return they give it the money and that's the success story of Netflix with a subscriber surge Wow. All right, let's move on to the banks. We had earnings from Bank of America and Goldman Sachs. Bank of America's a grind-out story. They just did exactly what you expect. Goldman Sachs' grind-out story did exactly what you expect. And when you have those situations, you know, you're not going to get a stock to soar. You'd like to do it much better than expect, but you're not going to get it hit. And if it does get hit, you want to buy it. Bank of America is very, very levered to short-term rates. If short-term rates go up 100 basis points, they add, get another $3.1 billion. So if you think there's going to be rate hikes in the next year, you buy Bank of America. Huh, simple as that. All right, how about United Health's earnings? You know, United Health, there was no flies on that quarter. Once again, United Health, like J and J, they report perfect quarters. Mm -hmm. Stocks then go down, and what happens is then you wait a couple days and you buy them. Uh, United Health quarter was a thing of beauty, uh, as it always is. It's also a great play on uh, the total stalemate in Washington. You mentioned J and J. That was your Mad Dash segment. Yeah, J and J delivered exactly what you want. Very good numbers in the medical device. The thing that people have to realize with J and J is once again the stock ran ahead of the quarter. When they run ahead of the quarter, they sell off and then you buy. Advanced Micro Devices downgraded at Barclays. You know, look, Advanced Micro is stalled here at 14. They do have a lot of chips. Uh, Eric Johnson's got by far the best reporting on AMD that I have seen. Uh, they have a lot of chips that are competitive, I think, to Intel, and they also have uh, chips that are used in gaming that are very good. But the thing that has bothered people is, is that they also use the chips in cryptocurrency mining, and that business is turned down uh, right now. Uh, I, I like AMD, and I would use weakness to buy it. Okay, on Stop Trading, you talked about restoration hardware. Yeah, well, this is just a ma massive short squeeze. The company's borrowed a lot of money to be able to buy back stock because they think the stock is very cheap. Gary Friedman said it was very cheap. He told you to buy the stock, I think, with his own buy. He put his money where his mouth is in the 20s. I don't like short squeezes because I don't know when they're going to end, but this is a classic one. All right, Jim, let's end as we always do with earnings to watch, and we have a few of them. Let's start with IBM. Yeah, IBM's very tough because uh, they still, I think, haven't been able to get enough of the company's fast-growing analytics, uh, cognitive business, uh, to replace the slower growing. But I do think that selling it here, as some people have said, I mean, look, I think it's, I think it's probably eight to 10 down and maybe 15 up. So that's like a decent risk reward because of the 4% uh, would be 4.5% yield if it really gets hit. All right, and then how about T-Mobile? I like T-Mobile. I wish it weren't re running. I said last night to buy it ahead of the quarter, and everybody's doing that. And I wish that I, I, I didn't know people would take me and just go do it. But I think that uh, I, I think John Ledger delivers. I just wish it were still at 61. And we love when he's on Mad Money. <laughs> oh, he's he's a sensational guy. Uh, Nvidia down a couple. You had to buy Nvidia. That is again very much linked to uh, Bitcoin. Uh, you have a lot of hot money in Nvidia. Every time Nvidia has hot money in it, the stock tends to sink. You want to buy it. I remain convinced that Broadcom of the Action Alert names right now very good. A uh, Magellan Midstream up, uh, downgraded and upgraded. I want to take the upgrade side. Uh, looking closely at Walgreens, see what's going to happen there with Rite Aid. No answers yet. These are all ones that I'm looking at. Uh, Wells Fargo, not as good as Bank of America, not as good as J.P. Morgan. Uh, Citigroup, number one. Bank of America, number two. So far in the pecular. Uh, what about Morgan Stanley? They're also reporting tomorrow. I think it'll be fine. Okay, how about American Express? You know, I, I wanted American Express to get uh, Charlie Scharf. They didn't. I mean, American Express has a pretty good book of business. I'm not going to rave about it. I think the stock ran up in anticipation that they would get Charlie Scharf. I think that Charlie Scharf going to Bank of New York is a real positive. Don't forget, I really think that MasterCard and Visa are very, very good. They also tend to trade down, and then you want to buy them. Any stock that is really run in anticipation of a great quarter t tends to trade down, except for, I think, Microsoft, which will not. I think Microsoft will be good. All right, Jim Kramer, we'll leave it there. Thank you Thank so much you as much. always. And for Thank more you. information on the stocks you mentioned, please head back to thestreet.com.